Ever since he became one of the NBA's most hyped prospects ever, one of the bigger concerns surrounding Zion Williamson was whether his style of play could actually impact winning basketball. In high school, he ran through his area's lower level competition. In college, he was always the most athletic player on the court. But the NBA is an entirely different game, and NBA scouts didn't know what to make of Zion's highly unusual body and skill set. Would he still be any good once he hit 30? Would his heavy body cause countless injuries to his knees upon landing? How would he there as an undersized power forward and was his lack of a jump shot a big enough hurdle to prevent him from becoming a superstar? Well, Zion's now early into his fifth NBA season and while he's barely played a hundred NBA games, every single question surrounding him has already been answered. And let's start with the most important, Zion's impact on winning. See, the college game in America is a lot different than the NBA's. As an example, the Naismith Player of the Year is an award given to the top college basketball player every year. And of the last 20 winners, only five of them became star level NBA players. Two years ago, a player named Luca Garza won the award. Although he absolutely obliterated his competition in college, he was barely picked in the 2021 NBA draft. Scouts knew his game wouldn't help NBA teams win basketball games, and they weren't wrong. Last year, he played just nine minutes per game for Minnesota, where he was one of the worst defensive big men in the NBA. Garza's game was a thing of the past, and although those words don't necessarily describe Zion Williamson, Zion didn't have any sort of a jump shot and there hasn't been a player built like Zion that's dominated the NBA in a very long time. Sure, we haven't seen a 300 pound 6'6 six six big man who's got Superman hops in decades, but that's only because they're the most difficult kind of player to come by. Turns out when they come around, they're absolute forces on the court. Zion at one point was a prime example of this fact, because as a 20 year old in the 2021 NBA season, Zion would average 27 points on an insane 61% from the floor, becoming the only player in NBA history to do so. Now, the team ended the year with a record of 31-41, and 41, which doesn't sound too amazing, but remember, this was second year Zion Williamson leading a totally dysfunctional team. B.I. and Lonzo on the wings were solid floor spacers, but Steven Adams clogging up the paint and Eric Bledsoe shooting bricks from three probably weren't the best players to start alongside Zion. In today's game, at least four players on the court need to be able to shoot. When you got three guys that can't shoot, it's basically game over. But that didn't stop Zion from making his impact felt. In the games he played, the Pelicans were barely under 500. In the games he didn't play, they were 2-9. and nine. In LeBron's second year, he led the Cavs to a 42-40 and 40 record, also hovering right around 500. Jordan had the same record in his second full season. Not to mention, Zion's second year in reality was more like his rookie year, because as a true rookie, he only played in 24 games. Safe to say, Zion's ability to lead the Pelicans to wins was questioned by nobody in New Orleans. The future was Zion, and if Zion continued to be healthy, success was inevitable. But Zion would not stay fully healthy. He didn't play a single game in the 2022 season, as a fracture in his right foot in the summer before kept him off the court for the entirety of it. But when he returned for 2023, it didn't look like his game or athleticism took any major hits. In fact, Zion was playing the best team basketball of his career and appeared to be on his way to leading the Pelicans to their best season since Anthony Davis was around in 2018. Throughout the season, Zion would again put up a monstrous 26 points and 7 rebounds on 60% shooting, but this time he'd average nearly 5 assists per game too, unlocking a part of his game that nobody was too sure we'd ever get to see. The hype was back at an all-time high, Zion was doing Zion things and the NBA couldn't believe what they were seeing. This guy was averaging superstar numbers and his team saw contending level success, which just doesn't make sense given how young his career was. Zion only lasted 29 games though, this time it was a hamstring that ended his year, but by his last game he left the Pelicans with the record of 24 and 13, which was on track for ending the season as the number two seed. Remember, he had just come back from missing an entire season of basketball. It's not very often that we see a player play to their full capabilities after such a long hiatus from the game. So Zion was only getting started. The idea that what we were seeing was a fluke just didn't hold any water at that point. We've seen superstars dominate at a young age, but rarely like Zion. Think about it. The only doubts surrounding Williamson as we speak are his injuries, and that's an insane thing to say about a player who's played less than a season and a half of NBA basketball so far. His resume includes historic season averages at an unheard of age, two all-star selections, and very promising signs of having the ability to carry a basketball team to a successful season. And that is exactly what Zion is going to do this year, because beyond depending solely on Zion to lead New Orleans into the future, the Pelicans have taken matters into their own hands and made a series of really good roster decisions to complement the young phenom. They've drafted 
drafted an all-world defender in Herb Jones with the second round pick. They took a big playmaking point guard in Dyson Daniels, 8th overall in 2022, who will set up Zion for plenty of lobs in the future. Trey Murphy was taken in the first round of 2021, and he's got a whole lot of Macau bridges to his game. These guys to go along with crucial role players that the Pelicans have signed or traded for over the past few years will mesh beautifully with the big three in New Orleans. Zion's already proven to be able to dominate in probably the worst situation you could put him in. Non-shooters, non-playmakers, but with a competent team that fits well together, we're gonna see the Pelicans become a top four seed by the end of this season. And this isn't even taking into account what Williamson has improved on since we've last seen him play. In today's league, you either need at least two all NBA level players in order to achieve a top seed or just one that's capable enough to carry a team there. And based on what the new look Zion Williamson looks like, the Pelicans have without a doubt found their guy. We're only a handful of games into the 2024 season, but Zion has already showed off a lot of ability that he's teased of in the past, but hasn't put on full display until now. Zion's always been a freak of nature, but in the past, he's mostly only relied on certain parts of that to dominate the NBA. The bully ball is still very much a thing, and it should be if you got a player like Zion on your team. But check out this play. Zion's with the ball a few feet above the three-point line. Herb Jones comes over to set a screen. Zion then cleanly splits the two defenders and absolutely punches it all over the reigning defensive player of the year, Jaron Jackson Jr. Forget the dunk for a second though, the handles there from Zion is what stands out. And check out this play, Randall sags way off of Zion. He gets a screen, but Randall continues to sag off. So Zion beats the switch and uses the space as a runway to get all the way to the rim. There's no good way of guarding Zion because he's too quick if you guard him up close but if you give him space, he will use that as a runway to bulldoze his way through you. This is why a shifty Zion Williamson is going to take over the NBA over the coming years. The combination of speed, size, and handles is too much for opposing teams. And because there's no good way to guard it, Zion will dominate whatever kind of defense is put in front of him. The rumor has it that Zion has lost around 20 pounds in order to combat injuries to his legs. And it looks to be true because he seems to be a whole lot faster and agile than he was in years before. He's done so without losing his ability to bully players at the rim. 270 pound Zion is just as imposing as a 300 pound Zion. The only difference is that now he could beat defenders in multiple ways at an all time level. Now as much as the Pelicans have improved their roster to fit Zion over the past couple of years, there's been one noticeable disadvantage to it all. Having star wing players Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum control so much of the offense, not only has it taken away touches from Zion, but it's forced him to play back to the basket far too much based on what we've seen thus far. Zion will score in every way imaginable, but early on he's making just 51% of his shots. And although early, that's the lowest of his career so far. He's at best playing on the wing and posting up only occasionally. We saw major improvement in Zion's ability to play make and create chances for his teammates last year where he averaged almost 5 assists a game, which was huge because in college a few years prior, he was dishing out only 2.1 assists per game. The transformation of Zion from a post up lob catching power forward to a playmaking wing was on full swing, and with everything we've been seeing him improve on lately, it only makes sense to allow him to keep improving in those areas. Regardless, the Zion Williamson takeover is coming at us, and as a result, the Pelicans look like an absolute force to be reckoned with. Remember, Zion has barely seen the court over the past few years, and he's still adjusting to a new team, a new body, and a new role on the court. So the only real possibility from here on out is that he continues to get better, and if he's any better than the previous version of himself, the league will have no answer for him whatsoever. But what are your thoughts on Zion Williamson? Will the Pelicans end the year as a top seed? Or are you going to hold your breath until Zion could get through a full season healthy? Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one.